You hear that? That's my Onan 4000 watt generator. Cummings Onan RV QG 4000 watt generator running. I uh, decided to do a tune-up on this and replace the air filter, I replace the carburetor, I replace the spark plug, and I replace the oil. Now, when I went to go replace the oil, I watched a couple videos on YouTube, and there were some people on there saying that for this 4,000 watt RV QG, you should put 1.6 quarts in there. Now. This is a propane generator, um, but I believe it's the same oil level that's going to be in the gas. The problem is with the oil amount in there, this generator will not run when it's too low or when it's too full. So somebody, uh, some of the videos I saw was 1.6 quarts, which is way too much for mine. I, when I put that in there, I was blowing all this white smoke. You can see all this crap coming out of it. Um, it just did not want to run at all. It was horrible. So, watched another video, and a guy was talking about how the oil level was too high at 1.6 quarts. So, at 1.6 quarts, this is the top of it. It would come up to about right here. And if you ran the engine and tried to pull a dipstick out, the oil would just flow out. It was way too much oil, whoever did the videos, that um, said 1.6. So I saw a video. This is like an inch and a quarter on the thread here going down this for the thread of this part right here that screws in. And it's like an inch and a quarter. And you got to get that oil level down to there to maybe a quarter inch below that. And right now, it's it's like an eighth of an inch into the threads. And that means that it's down about a quarter of an inch below that. But when I tried running this with that 1.6 quart, like I said, I was blowing white smoke out of here. And then all this moisture and black soot was coming out on top of it and uh it's a propane generator it doesn't get glazed up in the bowl get like gas does gas will gel and it'll clog up the things but propane doesn't have that problem you can sit it in there for years and it'll still start one of the things i noticed too was on my handle Sometimes I think it's sticking. So the valve right here, if you turn it with that arrow going clockwise, it turns the gas off. If you turn it the other way, it turns it on. And I've learned to just leave that on because when I turn it off, it's like the, the valve gets stuck and there's no propane that comes out of it. And it doesn't want to keep the engine running. But when I leave that like that, the pressure's constant going there. Um, you know, I'll have to take a look at maybe getting that valve replaced on that. But I just wanted to share with you, um, I was having a nightmare of a time trying to start this generator. And it was just horrible. And usually when you replace... Um, and do a tune-up on these, they'll start right back up. The other thing was I put a um, cycle bat, lithium iron phosphate, 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour mini battery in here. I got a second one on the way, and I'm going to be able to put two of those in there. Now, when I had that AGM in there, I maybe got 20 or 30 times trying to start this, and that battery went dead at like 11.9, 11.8. When this thing can go down to 10.5 on the voltage, and it's like that being an AGM being at 12 volts. So I cranked on this when I was before I found out to drain some oil. I cranked on like 70, 80 times. 
And this thing was still 11.7 volts, which I could still go down to like 10.5. So I had only used, it was like 13.2 when I started. I'd only used half of it. I could have cranked on another 70, 80 times. So when you're out there and you're having problems camping and you can only get 20 or 30 times trying to turn that over, do yourself a favor. Get one of these Life LifePo 4 batteries. Um, you can crank so much longer and they charge up. I actually have like a little 50 watt uh, solar panel up on top of the roof that goes to a charge controller and it keeps this thing topped off. And uh, even in the winter time where that sun is low in the sky, see how low it is above those houses? It's able to keep this thing topped off between the voltage is showing like 13.2 to 13.6 um, on that little charge controller and doing a great job. So just want to share that with you. If you're having a hard time starting this thing, um, there's a couple of things it could be. There's a, let's see if I can zoom in here. There is a um, notch right here. I'm below sea level, so this is at sea level. And if you look on the other side, the adjustment is for 10,000 feet. So I would actually... I would actually turn this knob this way, clockwise. This is like at around a 10 o'clock position. If I was at 10,000 feet, I would be at like the two o'clock position on this. And it just turns very easily on this. So the uh, this adjustment can cause it not to run. And then there's another adjustment right up here. And then there's actually some adjustments back there, but I don't really suggest messing with them. I did, and I actually ended up um, going counterclockwise on it because the spring was the spring was normally like this. It was compressed all the way, so I let it out a little bit by going counterclockwise with the screw, and it seemed to run better. Now when I start it, it starts right up. So if you're having a problem starting this, try and get your oil level down. It's probably going to be like a quart that'll go in there. I put 1.6 quarts. I had to take out like six, six tenths of a quart, leaving me about a quart somewhere in that range. You're going to have to check on your dipstick to, uh, to be able to make sure that you're at the right area. You just you just want to be on the bottom end of this and then just keep some oil with you um, whenever you go anywhere. Let's see if I can get this to stay right here. All right, so right here, your this notch is full. This is low. So you want to be somewhere in this range down here. If you get up in the half range up higher, it's going to um, not want to run for you and stay running. The problem is once the oil gets hot, it expands. And if it's down here, it can expand all the way up here. And then you're getting too close to it. And the engine's not going to like that. And if you're definitely at the halfway mark, you're going to go above that full level on here. It'll actually come up right now. It's it's hot oil and it's just starting to come into the threads down there. And that's like an inch and a quarter down there to get to the threads from the top of this to the end there. And I usually I had it at like a quarter of an inch below that, and it's running great. I'm not having any problems with it. But now it's just a little bit of, it actually rose up um probably a little over a half of an inch to um after the engine oil got hot. So that's a lesson <laughs> that uh, can save you hours of having to mess with this. And I used to come up and try to start it after it was running for a while. 
and it still have a ton of problems trying to get it to run again. Now, I just come up, and it starts right up. So, I mean, I don't have to even prime it. When I first went to go start this today, I primed it for 10 seconds one time and start right up. And then when I drained that oil out, I found out that when I kept holding this down after it would start, but it wasn't actually running yet, I can hold it down for two to three seconds and it'll start running. And then I can let off of it. And before, if I tried to do that with too much oil in here, it would just stop. It would just go blah, 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 and then stall out. So that oil level has so much to do with being able to start it and to be able to keep it running and running without the engine surging, going. So that's an easy fix. Doesn't cost you anything. Just drain a little oil out and you'll probably see your headaches go away. The other easy fix is I got this cycle bat battery. Uh, they sent it to me to try it out and I am so impressed with it, I bought another one yesterday. So I'm gonna have two of them in here, which is going to give me, I'll put that in parallel, where I'll put the, the positive to the positive of the other battery and the negative of the negative, but I'll move this negative from here to the negative on the second battery so it charges um, across the two batteries. So I don't have to worry, in fact, with that AGM, if I left this little light on, this outside light overnight, it could drain that AGM battery. When I left this thing on overnight for, actually I had it on from like two o'clock in the afternoon till eight o'clock in the morning the next morning. And I only used, I went from 13.2 to 13.1 volts on my battery barely even moved it at all so highly recommend the cycle bat and i like the cycle bat because they're saying you could put four of these in series to um make 48 volts and these are 48 volt inverters uh these are 51 20 volt batteries but I can put four of those in series to make 51.2 volt battery bank to run those. And that's what I'm thinking about doing for the motorhome is um, getting a couple more of them to do that 48 volt battery bank and uh, be able to run my mini split. Um, that would give me a five kilowatt hour battery Overnight, I'm probably going to need at least 10 kilowatts, so I don't know if that'll actually work. But I want to play with it and see how long I could run, so I'm just going to buy a couple at a time. And um, these are the, they're just starting to come out where you can now hook these up in series to get 48 volts. And you could take two of those sets, they say, of four in series and parallel them so you have eight batteries. And that would be 10 kilowatt hours of uh battery bank so um and those take up very little room they're like nine inches nine inches from side to side they're like five point three five and a half inches this way and i want to say like nine and a half going from top the top of it to the bottom so i can i'm only an inch shy of being able to get three batteries in there in parallel. If I um, if I could somehow extend this um, tray an inch, I could get another, I could get a third one in there, or I could just relocate that or put them underneath my table in there. Um, I could put three or four of them in parallel and then uh, be able to run those cables because uh, the table's right here. The floor's right there. It wouldn't be that hard to do. Um, and that goes, those cables right there go up into the breaker box, breaker panel on the motor home. 
So might be able to put two down there and maybe two up top and have a cover, build a little cover for those. And uh, these batteries, um, testing this thing out, and like I said, so far I really like this battery. It's a nice battery. Um, and they sent it to me to get an honest review, so I'm putting it through the ringer, leaving the light on all night long, and then starting it with 70 to 80 cranks on this thing, and it still was at 11.7. That amazed me. So, anyways... That's it on the motorhome. Um, whether you have a propane or a gas one, the gas one, you might have to tear your carburetor apart, but a propane, it's not going to gel up like that. But still, I think I bought a carburetor kit where it was the carburetor, the air filter, the spark plug, and uh, I can't remember if it was one or two quarts of oil, and it was like 80 or 90 bucks. So it's not that expensive to buy a new carburetor, and do a complete tune-up on this thing. Um, someone also said that they were having a problem with this thing surging, and they pulled the spark plug out and put it at 0.2, and they put it back in, and they got rid of the surge. So I didn't ever have to get to that point, but I'm still going to pull the spark plug out, gap it at 0.2, make sure it's in that gap, and then put it back in. But I'll keep note of what the gap is before I change it, so in case it doesn't run. But they said that they had the same exact uh, propane generator, and it worked. Anyways, just wanted to share that with you. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. See you in the next video, and I hope you have a truly wonderful and extremely blessed 2025.